today I'm happy uh, to uh, we are happy to have a two presentation from Dr. James Stadler and Dr. Osman Alim from University of Calgary. Uh, Dr. James Stadler is a professor uh, housed with the, uh, within the Department of, of the Mathematical Mathematics and Statistics. Uh, he has served as an associate head of this department, transitioning to the co-director of the data science and uh, analytics program in 2018. He was the lead uh, author of the uh, first Canadian edition of uh, introductory uh, uh, statistics, uh, exploring the world through the data and uh, is a past recipient of the Faculty of Science Teaching Award. He has also served his professional society, the Statistical Society of Canada, president of the Statistical Education Section, and uh, as a chair of the Statistics Education Committee, uh, a committee on which uh, he currently serves. And the next, uh, and, uh, another presenter uh, is Dr. Uh, Osman Alim. He's a, an associate professor in the Department of, uh, Department of the Computer Science at the University of Calgary. He directs the visualization and the graphics group that addresses a variety of problems in visual computer uh, computing and uh, using multidisciplinary approaches. Uh, rooted in data visualization, computer graphics, image processing, scientific computing, high performance computing, uh, data, scientist, uh, data science and machine learning. is also co-director of the data science and analytics uh, professional graduate program. Uh, so now we are happy to listen to their presentation. Uh, today a little bit about the, um, uh, the data science program at the University of Calgary, the past, the present, and what's coming around the corner in the future. Uh, but first and foremost, um, this is, uh, I do would like to make a territorial acknowledgement. I do live and work on historical Aboriginal territory, so I'd like to acknowledge the Aboriginal or traditional territories of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta, Black Nation, which includes the Pixani, uh, uh, um, the Sisika and the Kainai First Nations, as well as the Susina First Nation and the Stony Nakoda First Nation, uh, including the Chiniki, Bears Pond, Wellesley First Nations. Uh, quite honestly, I should, I should know this by heart by now. And the city of Calgary is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, uh, Region 3. So, as I said, we're going to talk a little bit about a brief history of data science at the U of C. It's a relatively short history. Um, then we're going to talk about the current state of the data science program or programs at the University of Calgary. And then we're going to talk about what's coming around the corner um, at the University of Calgary in terms of data science. So in fall 2003 uh, and beyond. So um, way back in September 2016, there was a group of uh, relatively motley crew of four people. So there's me and there's uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Joseph Ling, who's since now retired, I don't know if his retirement was a result of being on this committee or not. Um, and then we have uh, two computer, two uh, colleagues from the Department of Computer Science, Wes Willett and Ehud Charlotte. And um, we were tasked to put together a data science program. So two people from the Department of Mathematics and Statistics, my home department, and two from Computer Science. and. Um, it took us quite a while. It took us a couple weeks just to define what data science was. So the arguments got, uh, the discussions got relatively intense. Um, and um, uh, there was no 
uh, beard pulling or anything like that, but uh, this is a reference in old Bugs Bunny cartoons. So there's Pumpkinhead and Kurt, and eventually we uh, we made amends and came to a definition of what we thought a good definition of data science was. I'm sure if you talk to uh, your colleagues, um, talk to 300 people, you're going to get 300 different definitions of what data science is. So this is what we came up with, and it's based on this definition that we built. Uh, the various programs that exist at UOC. So we call it an amalgamation of applied branches of computer science and statistics. And again, data science, um, you know, what is a data scientist? Uh, this is a question that uh, perhaps doesn't have a correct answer, but I'm a statistician. And um, years ago, when I, walk into, when I would walk into a room and identify myself as a statistician, I could clear a room quicker than an anthrax game. Right? Or I get the, uh, oh, I took a statistics course at U of C. And you get, the, you get the nightmare the nightmare scenario. Now you walk into a room and you're a data scientist. I mean, it's like a Kardashian walking in. You know? So you're the most popular person in the room. But I, uh, I digress. Um, so um, based on our definition of data science, we put together uh, what was intended to be a, an undergraduate major, so a BSE with a major in data science. Uh, we did it relatively quickly. We had a quick meeting with the provost at the time. The provost is a very busy person. Um, the provost is asked almost on a daily basis for money for new programs. So we had a five-minute um, we had a five-minute meeting with the provost, and it was very uh, it was very well received. So she gave us some money, and she said, "Well, instead of starting with the major, start with the minor." So she gave us some money to start the undergraduate minor. Um, and with that money, we were allowed to uh, convert uh, some faculty, one in my department, one in computer science, to tenure track positions, which was good. Um, so this minor program was uh, approved in February 2016, and the undergraduate minor was to start in the fall of 2018. So in fall 2018, we're looking ahead to fall 2018, with an undergraduate minor in Data science. Now, um, how this minor works, I won't get too much into the details, but uh, a student in the minor can have a degree. They can be a student in the Hassey School of Business, so they can be a Bachelor of Commerce degree. Uh, they can be a Bachelor of Nursing degree if they wish. Uh, they can be a, in a kinesiology program, uh, science program, engineering program. Engineering programs are pretty demanding in terms of the number of courses they have to take, so we don't have too many engineering students in the undergraduate minor, uh, but they are required to complete eight courses in the data science minor, and these are the courses that they're required to complete. So data 201, which is introduction to data science, and then uh, a programming course, two courses in statistics. Um, so they're seeing some, some introduction, they're seeing some uh, RStudio, and uh, they're seeing some classical inference, some simulation inference, and some machine learning. Uh, then data 301, or, or 470, or sorry, 471, and then there's a capstone project. Uh, that capstone project is, of course, I'm currently teaching or co-teaching right now. So currently, um, the minor has been going for about five years, and we typically have, on average, about 80 students that with a declared minor in data science. So after the data science minor, we thought about putting together a major in data science. Um, but at the time, um, the higher-ups at the university thought maybe it would be more interesting seeing some of the trends that were going on, not only in the U.S., but seeing the, um, the professional program of data science at U of T and at UBC. So we thought we would try to compete, or we thought we would compete with them. And we pivoted on the, or we put a stop to the creation of an undergraduate major in data science. And we moved on to the creation of a professional program, uh, a master's program in data science and analytics. So here's what it looks like, or here's where we started. Um, we created it as a stackable certificate or a tiered program in the sense that uh, a student entering the program could finish a certificate or complete a certificate, a graduate, or, sorry, a graduate certificate in data science analytics. And there's four courses that uh, populate the certificate in data science. Once they complete the certificate in the professional certificate in data science analytics, 
Then they can springboard into any one of three diplomas, diploma streams. So typically we, off, we offer the certificate piece in the fall term and the three diploma pieces. Uh, diploma in biostatistics, or sorry, health data science and biostatistics. A diploma in core uh, data science and a diploma in business analytics. All three diplomas, they have different courses. Um, they have the same learning outcomes, but we're providing students with domain, uh, domain expertise. Uh, so this is how we started the program, a stackable certificate diploma program. And we ran this version of the program. Uh, our first intake was in fall 2018. Uh, next slide, please. And so in fall 2018, so I should say that when we sent off this program to the Alberta government, we sent it off in early, it was early January, first week of January in 2018. We received approval very quickly, uh, middle of March of 2018. So you can imagine the marketing that, uh, that was ready to go to accept students into the program for you know, four or five months down the road. Uh, so we were quite pleased with our first intake. So we had 34 students, and again, this visualization is broken down by students in the various specializations. In the first year of this program, the reason why there's so the HDSB, that's the Health Data Science and Biostatistics, the reason there was zero is um, the Health Data Science and Biostatistics uh, diploma is run by the Cumming School of Medicine, and they weren't ready uh, to offer the courses just yet. Uh, the Business Analytics uh, Diploma, those courses are run by our friends over at the Haskins School of Business. So in fall 2018 and fall 2000, then it bumped up, it almost doubled in fall 2019. So during this time, we always envisioned this to be a master's program, so a course-based um, graduate degree, professional degree. So we started working on the master's piece of the program. Uh, next slide, please. Um, oh, it's your turn. Do oh, you, you want this? I'll, I'll it's try nice, it. it's nice to walk around. It's a nice cool room. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll use this. I have to point some things on, on the slide. Can people hear me? All right. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So, uh, so Osman Alim, I'm from the Department of Computer Science, and I, I share the pleasure of uh, I, I have the pleasure of sharing the co-directorship of the program with uh, with Jim Seller. Uh, I've been doing this since about uh, 2018, so just around. This time, when uh, the certificate and diploma pieces were running, uh, we uh, I, I joined the, the program, and uh, one of the things that uh, we did around that time, this was just before uh, the pandemic, uh, we organized um, uh, a curriculum uh, retreat for the instructors teaching in the program to see how well aligned we were uh, with the learning outcomes and the knowledge areas that have been put forward by the Association for Computing Machinery uh, in, in the data science space. So the ACM uh, breaks uh, the knowledge areas in, uh, that are within data science into uh, su uh, some uh, sub-disciplines, sub sub-topics, which you can see here on, uh, on this slide. And uh, what's really shown here is how well aligned our curriculum is with, with those knowledge areas. So here, this is a tree map showing uh, what topics are covered. So the size of the, of the tree map essentially is showing um, how, how much of each of the each of those contexts uh, each of those topics is receiving uh, coverage in, in the program. So as you can see, uh, we have um, topics in machine learning, um, uh, analysis and presentations. So that essentially covers your visualizations, interactions, dashboards, um, and then uh, data acquisition, governance and management. Of course, basic uh, computational skills, so programming. Uh, data management, uh, and then the also professional uh, skills like communication and professionalism. Um, and of course, and then what? One thing we did was we added uh, some additional things uh, that we that we have in the program, which distinguishes our program from other programs that are uh, in, in Canada and in the U.S. or worldwide. Is that we have these domain uh, specializations uh, in the program that you see here in the in the middle. So currently, uh, we have uh, the, the core data science screen. Uh, which does not specialize in a particular uh, domain, uh, but delves deeper into uh, topics in, in data science, so, it's, so in uh, cloud computing or machine learning. But we do have these two specializations, so business analytics and, and uh, uh, health, health data science and biostatistics uh, that you see over here. 
if you maybe want to, uh, this might be a little bit more interesting to folks in, uh, in, in the data science space as kind of what kinds of tools that we're using. So this, uh, this chart kind of highlights some differences between the different specializations. So on the left, you see the, the core data science uh, specialization. And on the right, we have the, the, the domain specializations, business analytics, and the health data science and, and biostatistics. So there is quite a bit of overlap in these in terms of uh, the, the tools. So th all of them are, are using R and Python heavily. So a little bit more in the, in the core data science screen, where uh, there is uh, more coverage of our, more usage of Python. And in the business analytics uh, uh, diploma, they're, they're more, um, they're heavier users of R. And then you can see a, a, a bunch of tools there that are essentially different uh, flavors of Python and are, are packages that are used for various data manipulation, wrangling, machine learning, and those, those types of, of tools. But, but also, you will see some of these uh, uh, no-code kind of approaches or the kind of software tools, the complete suites of uh, uh, data analytics tools that uh, some of these specializations are using. You see Power BI here, and somewhere around here, there's also Tableau. Uh, like mentioned, mentioned over there. So uh, quite, a, quite a bit of um, overlap, but uh, we're, we're covering the, uh, you know, the, the, the open source ecosystem of, uh, of data science quite well in, in these diplomas, different diplomas and streams. This, uh, I'm not sure if uh, people in the back can, can see this uh, really uh, well or not, but this is uh, an outcome of the topic uh, mapping that we did. Um, it's using... Uh, so in the center, you will see kind of, so it's, it's highlighting how machine learning concepts are, are covered uh, within, the, within the program. So you kind of see kind of mixed methods, unsupervised, supervised learning, deep learning, uh, and then general methods. Uh, and then the green bubbles are there uh, showcasing the different courses that we have in the, in the different streams. So up here we have the health data science courses, down here we have the core data science courses, and over here we have the business analytics courses. So we see kind of they're approaching the various different uh, uh, topic areas within machine learning. Um, uh, those are covered in all of the different, uh, different specializations. Uh, so we, you will see that uh, perhaps the numbers are, are showing up there or not, but the numbers indicate kind of to, uh, at what level these co concepts are covered. So one would be kind of introductory, two is intermediate, and three is advanced. Uh, so you will see here that in the business analytics, they're covering fewer topics, but they're covering them in more detail. Whereas in, uh, in, in the health data science and the core data science diploma streams, uh, we're covering uh, a variety of topics, but at an intermediate uh, level. All right, um, you want to continue? You're doing great. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, we'll go to the next one. Okay. Okay. All right, so this is, that, that was the state uh, just uh, before the pandemic and around that time, uh, this is just around three years ago. Now we were also putting together um, you know the kind of the, the feather on the cap or the last piece of the of the master's program, which uh, includes um, a, a capstone uh, course, so which is this integrated topics in data science and analytics, and uh, and also an internship. So this is a professional program, so students need relevant industry experience. So when they complete the integrated topics course and engage in a 200-hour internship, uh, they they get their their master's. So uh, the, the, the certificate and diploma were already approved. We just had to go through another approval process uh, to, uh, before we could submit this to, to, the, uh, to the government. And being an interdisciplinary program at the university, there were, I don't know, at least 10 different committees we had to go through to get this approved. Because there are so many different departments and, uh, and uh, different faculties involved. So this, this, is, this is also something new for, for the university is how to kind of navigate this real interdisciplinary space of data science. But after several months and countless meetings, uh, it eventually got approved at the university levels. Then uh, we uh, submitted it to the, to the government uh, for in mid uh, April 2019. And uh, then we waited, waited for quite some time. Then we waited and waited and waited, <laughs> bureaucracy waited, which is interesting because they, they approved these certain, the, the provincial government uh, was, you know, they heard about the program and uh, they approved the certificate and the diploma really quickly, within two and a half months, so we were very pleased. So we did not expect it to take, well, you can do the math, you know. We didn't expect it to take this long. Sorry, Guzman. Well, so, and then 
COVID happened, yeah. and that slowed things down even, even further. So eventually we got the approval in, uh, in the middle of, uh, of 2020. So at that time, we also had a, you know, students who were anxiously waiting for this, uh, the, the last piece so that they could come, come back and, and finish their degree. So we had a backlog of students. Uh, they, uh, they went through uh, the, 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 the program. Uh, you want to talk, take over here, Jim? Yeah, so, uh, you know, one of the things that we communicate to, communicate to the students in the program, even the first cohort, was we were very transparent to the students saying, you know, we know you're pursuing a certificate or perhaps one of the three diplomas, but there is a master's piece coming along. So at some point, um, if, at some point, you will be able to uh, complete a, a master's uh, degree in data science and analytics. So we kept them in the loop. We were, as, uh, as I said, we were very transparent in terms of letting them know what the process was. And I know, I know at, some, at some stages they were very frustrating. You know, when's the master's starting? And you know, we're waiting for the provincial government. Thank you for being so patient. So, um, so as the slide you'll see in a few moments, so we did have this bottleneck of students. So we had a cohort that finished their diploma in, um, in April of 2019 and a cohort that finished their various diplomas in fall of 2020, and then we still had students coming in. So as you can see, uh, once we had a sense of um, the master's was approved and we started promoting the master's, so you can see we had quite a jump in, uh, in the number of students uh, in fall 20, winter 21. So it's a little different in the sense that in, in, the, in winter 21, winter 22, winter 23, we typically have a fall intake of students and we run them through the certificate in the fall and one of the three diplomas in the winter. Uh, but in winter 21, winter 22, and this past winter, winter 23, we did, have, uh, we did have a winter intake. We had a winter intake this year because we had some international students that could not get their visas in time. We had about approximately 15 to 20 of them. So uh, we wanted to act on good faith and, uh, and uh, so that's why we're running a winter or started a winter cohort uh, this winter. So you can see our numbers have consistently gone up. Um, and one thing I do want to say is with respect to the masters uh, in data science and analytics, um, this is for essentially anybody. So uh, I'm sure that, that there's many of you in this room, that, you know, maybe five years ago, 10 years ago, you were doing something completely different and then you either fell into data science, into the data science space or something caught your eye and you're attracted to the data science space. Um, we were finding initially that uh, initially in our first first couple cohorts that many of the students we were seeing were students that were pivoting their careers. Um, uh, they were, they were, there was a subset of students who were tired of the cyclical nature of oil and gas. Uh, you know, we've, had, we've had students with PhDs in geophysics come through the program. We actually had a medical doctor. She came through the program uh, to get a better sense of, um, she went through the business analytics piece, um, but to get a better sense of understanding data and being able to visualize data and tell stories with data. Um, anyway, um, next slide, please. So, um, with respect to the master's piece, uh, there's two core. There's two courses. There's what we call an integrated topics course, and the student has to finish the integrated topics course. Then they go on to either uh, a professional internship or a research internship. So, what is the integrated topics course? It's basically a residency course, um, a two-week course. So, each day, nine to five. And we have, we break it up into 10 modules. So each day is a module, and some days may be module splits. And the idea behind this is, is there are, there are some higher level technical data science-y aspects that we do want to present to the students that we just don't have time for in the program. This, keep in mind, I do want to communicate that each one of the courses that is taught in the program is approximately, if you remember back to your undergraduate days or your university days or your post-secondary education days, each one of those courses is probably one and a third uh, courses. So the, the, um, the syllabi are very, very busy. Um, there's a lot of material we're teaching to these students in a very, very short time frame. Um, so we can't teach it all, can't teach it all. So, um, so as you can see, <coughs> pardon me, um, this is an example of, of a the first iteration of Data 691, which was run in the spring of 2021. Um, so we were subjecting the students to the three technical topics you can see, but we also wanted to expose them more to the soft skills. So 
we've been to, over the course of the creation of this uh, of this integrated topics course, we were talking to potential employers, people who were looking at data science students, and some of the feedback we received was, well, we'd really like them to pick up some of these uh, soft skills. Uh, so this is some of the communications that, for example, Canadian Border and Security was telling us about, uh, Statistics Canada was telling us about, they've taken on some of our interns, as you'll see in a few moments, and just to give them a sense of maybe a, a bit of a, some of, the, some of the flavor of a mini MBA. So there are some of the, uh, there are the professional topics that were, uh, that were, um, uh, <coughs> excuse me, made up the modules in the first iteration of 691 in the spring uh, of 2021. So once the student finishes the integrated topics course, then they go on to either a professional internship or a research internship. And what's the difference between the two? Professional internship, you get some money, you get paid. Research internship is unpaid. Either way, um, the expectations of the student are the same. The internship is 200 hours, so a minimum of 200 hours. Um, many of our students in the program uh, are currently working or are working full time and are taking the program full time, which is very impressive. I, I don't have those time uh, management um, skills, that's for sure. Um, but we, uh, we, we don't expect such students to tell their employer, sorry, Ed Max, I've been working with you for 20 years, but I've got to take a leave and find an internship with some other company. So we certainly don't expect that uh, for, the, for people who fall within that cohort. So they can do an internship with their current employer. They just have to carve out some little specialized project, spend 200 hours on that project, and specifically they need to uh, try to employ some of the data science methods that they've seen, uh, not just in the diploma, but in the, uh, in the technical piece of Data 691, work on some project. So 200 hours, um, they, give a, they, they give an oral report, a written report, and they've got a master's degree in data science analytics in their back pocket. And the, the structure of the program, the program is a one-year program. Um, however, uh, a student can finish it in 10 months. And we do understand that uh, typically internships are three or four months, and they're, typically, they're, they're relatively seasonal. Um, we're just asking a student that if you've got a three-month or four-month internship, carve out 200 hours, devote that to your uh, professional internship project, and you're good to go. Okay. So these are just, uh, again, I'm not going to waste your time. You can, everybody here can read. Um, so here is some of our past internship partners. Um, and if you are an employer and you're scratching your head and you're thinking about maybe you need some internships, please talk to us after. Okay. We would love to talk to you. Okay. So there's some of our past uh, people that have, or uh, entities that have taken on our students uh, as interns in the past. And uh, so, and at the present, I should say. So now we're getting to the, the future part of the uh, of the presentation. Um, so, um, looking ahead, so it, as I said at the start of the talk, uh, fall 2023 and beyond. So we are adding another diploma specialization uh, to the Masters of Data Science Analytics program. This is a specialization in financial energy markets and data modeling. Um, so essentially what happens is students in this program take two of the same courses as students in the core diploma program. Uh, so they take a course in, uh, in some sampling theory, um, uh, some, some uh, non-linear regression, uh, some generalized linear models, and uh, machine learning. And then they take two different courses. Uh, they're kind of tier courses in the sense of modeling the financial energy markets data. And we were very, very creative in this advanced modeling of financial energy. Markets. Yeah, so we put a lot of thought into those course, uh, course titles. <laughs> okay, so, and then, uh, and then we hope, um, we hope by fall 2023, this fall, to have a full-blown undergraduate major in data science. So we've got the minor, we've got the professional program, and the major. So, uh, as Usman alluded to earlier, uh, this is a very laborious process when you create a program. 
um, especially the interdisciplinary um, aspect of this program. Uh, and the transdisciplinary aspect of this program, it has to go through many, many committees. So it's gone through the top are interested in the internship process. Uh, it's centralized, so uh, if you send an email to science.internship.calgary.ca, uh, you'll probably get Kristen, and she's, she's fabulous. She knows internships in and out. So, so that's, uh, that's, that's all we have to say, I think. Yeah. Want a question? Are you interested in questions? Absolutely. Yes, please. Yeah. 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 So, so um, yeah, go ahead. I'm a data management guy, and I wonder why you don't teach data management until year three, when I think it should be taught in high school. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. Uh, oh, you mean in the in the, the, the major? The major. There. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the major. Yeah. Because yeah. um, your file names right is something you should. In my no, no, no. That's that's fine. You know what? That's that's a computer science thing. So he's he's fucking. I I'm the, I'm the numbers nerd. I'm the stats guy. He's from computer science. So maybe maybe I, I'm gonna guess maybe it has something to do with they maybe the, the computer science wants to make sure that its students know how to uh, program, et cetera, et cetera. That would be my guess, but maybe he was making. Yeah. How in depth does data governance and management go? Um, uh, there is a module, so in, in the masters of, or in the MDSA program, there is a module on data governance and management, and there, there's a bit of a module on data governance. I can't remember whether it's a uh, half day or a full day. So that, those two screens or those two bubbles you saw, so that was, uh, that was the first iteration. Uh, one of the, one of the, so my answer is two parts. Um, one of the nice things about the integrated topics course, which is the first course the students take in the masters program is every year where we will looking uh, at the modules, so so for example, this year, um, some of the modules are being taken out, and we're replacing some modules with with newer ideas, such as I believe one of the new modules is code no code. Um, so I, I I'm not sure which module that's replacing at this point, um, but so that's the first point. Um, the second point was the second point I wanted to get to was about the undergraduate major. It slipped my mind. We'll get back to you. <laughs> Maybe I'll come and talk. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. No, no, I remember now. Yeah, there is there is a course. <laughs> There's a lot going on in this small little brain. Um, yeah, so we are creating a special course for ethics uh, in the in the undergraduate major, and actually we're working with uh, a faculty member over in the Department of uh, Philosophy that talks a bit about a lot about ethics, um, you know, data models or machine learning models that are already biased because they're, they're trained on biased data. So there is a specific course. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a foreign level course. So third year, fourth, fourth year in the undergraduate major that's specifically on this. So. This is all excellent to hear because some of us have been sort of looking at education you know, in, in the universities have been lacking in this. Yeah. People have gone and they come in as database analysts and they come in as data. And Recently, I've been seeing uh, master's courses of information management. I think great. We got business leaders going to be taught. They got to be interested and chase this. But where are we teaching the people to actually do information management? And it is it is challenging at, at the university side. I mean, I wish we could just if we want to change change a course, we could just do that. But it starts with a proposal. It starts with a you got to meet this department and meet this department. And, um, but, you know, that's that's one of the great things about, about us being co-directors and having this integrated topics course is, is if we want to flip out modules, tracking modules, as I said, the code, no code, we don't need to ask anybody's, um, uh, you know, we don't need to ask permission to do that. We just, if we get in trouble, we just say we're sorry. Uh, what, 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 I, I think what, what, what um, 
what will differentiate our undergraduate major from what some of the other undergraduate majors is, I think there's, uh, well, first of all, there's, there's uh, we have a full course, uh, we are going to have a full course, in, as mentioned earlier, on ethics, uh, data ethics, et cetera, et cetera, and governance. Um, so I think that's one distinction. I think another distinction is, is, uh, is we are using some higher level math courses, so there is a course in optimization. And as I said earlier, a lot of the data science programs are just a, in my opinion, are a mishmash of, well, let's take the courses we've got to get, we've already got, and let's change that to data science, or let's change some uh, computational uh, computer science course to data science, let's just rebrand it. So um, we are making a lot of efforts to design courses specifically for the data science students that That's my take on it. Yeah, so what, I'll just add to that. So I, I work in a, uh, an area, I guess, in, uh, in computational sciences, which requires a lot of uh, you know, math training in mathematics. So what, what I see, uh, I guess this is just, just echoing uh, what Jim just said. So there is uh, these higher level math courses, which uh, you, will, you will not see in, uh, in other computer science or, or data science programs. Uh, here, like for example, linear methods two, uh, you know, linear algebra and higher level uh, linear algebra exposure. Uh, we, we don't have that in computer science programs. So students coming from the data science program, they will have those um, higher level mathematical and analytical uh, skills. So optimization, I mean, we do that all the time in training machine learning models. It's, you know, behind the scenes, there's all of these uh, excellent op optimization routines that uh, people have developed, mathematicians have developed in in uh, collaboration with computer scientists because there's the mathematics side and then there's also the algorithmic side of it. So this is a course where it's covering both the, the, the math of optimization and as well, as well as how you implement these, keeping in mind kind of the complexity and speed and you know, performance considerations. Yeah, and, and the mathematics that's necessary. Uh, you know, we're not, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna have a, a data science major take a course in abstract algebra, so there's no rings and things that they're going to be exposed to. So what are you doing to give your students a competitive advantage when it comes to actually working in data science roles and advanced analytics? Because we all know it's a lot different um, when you're switching from academia to working in the real world and the data sets and the messiness and dealing with business lines. So curious just in terms of what the preparation looks like around that. Well, uh, a couple comments on that. Um, the courses that we uh, that we instruct throughout the program. Um, uh, right now, I'm talking about the the, the MDSA program. Uh, the courses are, are heavily heavily uh, they're intensive in terms of assignments and, and group work. Um, so there's no three hour final exam or anything like that. So we are getting them. We are they are diving quickly into working in teams. Um, Outside of that, uh, there are there are aspects of the program where we're trying to uh, assist the students through networking, um, developing some of their networking skills. Um, uh, we have a, what's called the Data Science Friday uh, once a month, um, where we get people from industry to come and talk to our students. And if you want to think about uh, about potentially doing a Data Science Friday at some point, contact me. Um, we're all full. Of, we're pretty much done those events. There's one more event. But, um, we're pretty much on those events, but uh, th that's what I would say right now. Uh, just trying to create various aspects to assist the, assist the students, and so they can um, so they can show off their what they're able to do. For example, a poster session. Um, what I think, I'm probably missing something. No, I was just gonna uh, pitch the poster session again because what we do is uh, we get get students exposed to real world data sets from the very first course. So it's not like toy data sets that they're working with. They will go out to like data portals, open data portals, uh, and, and uh, work with uh, data sets there, which can be sometimes clean, sometimes very messy, but it's kind of, they get the, the, the real experience of what it'll be like uh, working with, uh, with these data sets. And uh, yeah, if you wanna uh, take a look again, I would advertise the, the poster presentation that'll happen in about an hour, 3 p.m., where you can get to see what, uh, some of the, give you a flavor of some of the projects that Students are engaged in, in, in the MDSA program.